Hey there, and welcome to episode 20 of Code Hour. Today, I'm going to give a presentation on how to use private NuGet feeds with Azure DevOps. So imagine that another part of your organization comes to you and says, hey, we really love this section of code that you're writing, and we would like to be able to access it too. Well, perhaps they're a completely different project, a completely different solution, and so it doesn't really make sense to just link it in and do a project reference. A great way to do this would be to have a private NuGet feed. Now, if you're like most developers, you've probably heard of NuGet and you use the NuGet.org source, which is where everybody publishes their public open source project. But you don't have to use just that. You can use private NuGet feeds. The most common of these is MyGet. However, you can also use Azure DevOps. If you're already using Azure DevOps, it's a great place to publish your private NuGet feeds because the security model all matches up. Now, I am going to go roughly over a blog post that I did a couple months ago uh, because it was a really popular one. A lot of people showed a lot of interest in it, and I thought it would be fun to show the process from beginning all the way to the end. There's also a source code reference that you can download the source code and check it all out. So starting a project from scratch using dev.azure.com, you're going to go in and, well, I'm going to go in anyway, and create a new project. All right, so this is going to be widget code. It's going to be a private feed, and that's good enough for now. All right, good stuff. Here's our widget co site, and now we want to be able to create a repo. So I'm going to go to the repos section over here, and it's going to give me the option of being able to clone using HTTPS or SSH. I'm going to open up Visual Studio, and the new Visual Studio 2019 makes it really easy to clone repos. The very first dialog gives you uh, right up here, clone or check out code. So I'm going to clone this code. I'm going to paste in that URL. I don't like its default location. So I'm going to clone that. Okay, it looks like we probably have a C dev widget code, so I can create a new project in there. So let's do a new console app. Console app.net core. That's great because that means it's going to run on Mac and Windows. And we'll call this widget co the widget co widget maker although i tell you what i've done this before and let me tell you it's going to end up putting all my stuff in the wrong folder and i'm kind of anal about this stuff i think it makes life a lot easier if your solution file is in the root okay there we go so the solution file is in the root that's going to make me a lot happier anyway and so i can open my project yet again let's say that the code that the the core group at Widgetco people have made is just a, a password authentication. Now, in my case, when I did this a couple months ago and I blogged about it, the reason I did it was we needed to uh, share some code for getting to an Azure Key Vault key store. And one project had access to the key store, and it made life so much easier if we just sh bundled that, that code up and put it in the NuGet feed and shared it between multiple different projects. I'm going to try and keep this real simple, though. So I'm going to do console. So you might start by just saying if password is dot length is less than six. All right, something like this. So I'm going to run this, and it should say enter your password, which it did. And if I give it something simple, bad password, okay. And if I give it something Nice job. Have some widgets. Fantastic. I love widgets. Uh, so who doesn't love widgets? And oh yeah, we should really check that expression for null. Thank you, Richard. We appreciate that. So if we were good widget co-employees, we would probably want to put this logic right here because we know it's going to get a lot more complicated. We want to put this into a separate method, but really we want to eventually get it into a separate class. And then we're going to put it into, because the other departments come and talk to us, we want to put this into a separate library. So let's do this in steps. First of all, I'm going to extract this into a variable, and then we should probably extract this into a method. I'm going to use Resharper here, Control R M, extract method. Uh, you can do this in Visual Studio uh, default now too, I think. We sort of extract. I don't think I've extracted variable just quite yet. 
and if we're doing this work okay but really it'd be much cleaner if we had a password validator class public something like that and if we put this in here because statics bad right statics we don't like static because static is not unit testable uh, and as soon as you start going down the static route with your methods then everything becomes static and, and just um, it, it becomes messy it becomes really messy hard to test and it's a sign of a poor design so we're going to get a new password validator now I if I would be using if I was doing this a real project I would probably want to use some kind of dependency injection and I would want to use something like an inject um, but oh, that's private Let's switch that to public there we go okay we're getting closer now I just run this and just double check it I'd also probably be putting in unit tests but hey we're just just trying to get to some useful point in time okay so I'm gonna go up here and let's create a new project. We want to be able to ship this off to our friends in the uh, we'll call them in the reporting department in Widget Code because that's closer to what we're actually my actual scenario was. So this is a new class library. It's a great way to share code, and we're gonna call this Widget Code How about that? Looks good looks good and we would want to call this the password so we're going to take that password validator over here and hook it over and now not surprisingly what is password validator we have no idea well lazily because we're the we're the source of this project we'll just add a reference to it for now and if all goes well, oh, we do need to import it. There we go. Enter your password, ABC, bad password, try again. So that worked. So now we need the reporting department. And ideally, they would not be in the same solution. So you're just going to have to kind of bear with me here as I'm working through this. But in this case, I can make another console app in the same solution. And we're just going to make a reference via NuGet once we get this thing working. So this is a console app. And then I guess we want something along the lines of getting a new password validator and then saying while password validator dot is, it, is valid. Is password valid? All right, if this all goes well, then we get some pretty pictures. But the problem right here is we don't have a password validator. And we don't want to make a project reference. We really want to get that via NuGet. The first place to do that is to head on over to, to our Azure DevOps uh, solution here. And under Artifacts, we can go to WidgetCo and say we want a new feed. So we're going to call this the widget co password, yeah, password validator. And what's really nice about the private NuGet feeds that you, when you're using Azure DevOps is that you can do authentication of this using the exact same credentialing authentication technology that you use for all of Azure DevOps. So if you were to, for instance, go out and use MyGet, uh, it, it wouldn't all hang together quite as nicely. So I, I like this. I think this worked very well for us. And if you already use Azure DevOps, it'll work nicely for you. Oh, this is a neat feature here. So packages from public sources, you, it allows you to have a private NuGet feed, and that can be like your one source for all of your NuGet uh, sources. Everything goes through this one place, which allows manageability and visibility into when new sources get added and stuff like that. It's kind of a neat thing. Okay, they make this super easy. Uh, connect to this feed to get started. So if you click the connect to the feed, it gives you the instructions on how to do it. Now, we could follow these 
instructions by running this command and then running that command, but I am a huge fan of repeatability and I'm a huge fan of running things in the cloud as Azure, uh, as, as continuous integration and continuous delivery. So to do that, I'm not going to just run one-off commands. I'm going to write scripts, and I love using Cake to write scripts. The reason I use the main reason I use uh, Love Cake is because it allows me to write all my DevOps logic in C Sharp. It also allows me to run it all locally. It also allows me to debug it and set breakpoints and get IntelliSense. Another thing, it also allows me to be agnostic of who's running the code. So I could be running it locally. Azure DevOps could be running it, or if I ever needed to switch to Jenkins or some other build server, then I could just have them run it. It's just completely independent of, of the service provider. So that's a, a wonderful feature. So I'm going to start setting that up now. And a great place to get started, now I've talked about this in my other demos, but a great place to get started is in Visual Studio Code to do this. So I'm going to open my project with Visual Studio Code here. And if I control shift P to get into the commands, I have installed the Cake plugin and I have installed the C Sharp plugin. And those two plugins together allow me to install Cake to Workspace. And it should ask me some questions. What's the name of my file? Build.cake. Do I want to install the bootstrappers? I'm going to install, it's going to give me a PowerShell script and it's going to give me a bash script. So, sure, yeah, I want those. That's how you get into it. Uh, cake config file, yep, that'd be great. And do you want to install dependencies needed for debugging? I'm probably not going to do that at the moment, but sure, why not? Let's do that. We've got to get IntelliSense working. I'm just going to delete some of this stuff we don't need off the bat. To get IntelliSense working, um, because that's just really important for me, I mean, that's one of the main reasons why, why C Sharp is so wonderful, because of the tooling support, right? So I ought to be able to say, for example, task dot is dependent on, and it's not filling in right now. So first we should run it at least once. You run it once and it's going to give you a folder up here called build. And build is where Cake stores all of its assets. It's going to install, for instance, a NuGet dot exe which is going to use to install then download itself and then any add-ins that you had I've got a number of other YouTube videos where I talk about cake so I'm not going to go into too much detail on what it is because you can go and re refer to the other oh tools that I call it build it's tools so there we go we've got our tools folder we've got a nuget.exe which downloaded the cake folder awesome good stuff and so uh, now IntelliSense is going to work? You can ask, no, IntelliSense will not work yet. There's one command that you need to do, which is cake install IntelliSense support. And that is going to install the bakery, cake.bakery, which is somehow, I'm a little fuzzy on the details related to OmniSharp, and OmniSharp is what is giving us the IntelliSense. And you can see if you have problems with it, it's always worth going over into the output and, and jumping over to OmniSharp logs, and that's where the uh, IntelliSense information is coming from. So hopefully at this point, if I do dot is, yay, is dependent on, we've got IntelliSense working, excellent, good stuff. Okay, let's get into the real problem at hand, which is that we need to, well, we've got this, we've got this library called offlib, and we need to, well, we need to start by compiling it. We need to compile it. We need to get a DLL out of it. And then we want to create a NuGet package out of it. And .NET Core makes this super easy. .NET Core is great. And that's one of the things that it's great about. It's great about it. So we're going to do a new task called clean. This is always a good place to get started. And in here, we're going to clean directories clean bin. That ought to just remove everything out of the bin directory. So that will include our debug, our data standard. This is what we ran when we ran it in Visual Studio. So run that clean. If you watch what it's doing down here, it uses a lot more language than it needs to. It's 
invoking PowerShell and blah, blah, blah. All you really need to do is dot slash build dot PS1 and minus target equals clean. And the chances are very good. Yep, there we go. There's our bin directory. It's got nothing in it. Excellent. It's a good starting point. Next thing we want to do is to compile it. And so we'll need another task down here with an action. We'll call it build. And inside of build, we want to do a .net. What is it? Build. .net build, of course. Co.authlib. And we do need to specify some parameters here. So you can see the IntelliSense has popped up. So here, we want a new .NET build settings, because we need to specify whether we're going to build in release mode at the very least, which is called, oops, configuration. And we want our configuration to be, well, actually, we already have a parameter. It defaults to release, so that is a great, it's a great thing to use because that can be overridden. And why is this complaining? Oh, uh, .NET Core build, and this should be .NET Core build settings. Yeah, that threw me for a second. Okay, I think that should be good enough to get what we need, and I can either run it right now. But let's just do no. Yeah, let's just, one one thing. Let's just make sure this works. So we're going to run this build, and if this works as expected, then inside of the bin directory there should be a release folder, and inside of the release folder should be a netcore 2.2 folder or something net standard 2.0 and inside of there is our DLL. That's great. So from here we need to do what they were telling us to which is, oh push, no we're not quite there yet, not quite there yet. We need to make the, the package. And so to make the package .NET, has, .NET Core has built in a facility for doing that which is called .NET Core Pack I believe. And so we're going to .NET Core Pack. There we go. And this should probably be a variable. The offload proj. Okay, offload proj is the thing that we want to pack. Same thing that we just did a build on and now we're going to do a pack on it and we're going to do a new .NET Core pack settings. There we go. And here's a here's a subtle one for you. Just see if you can guess why I want no build equals true. The answer is because otherwise this will build. And when we do uh, is dependent on build, then build is going to also build. Uh, so I just like to let cake manage all my dependencies because, hey, that's what it is. Cake is a dependent dependency management system. And so life is just a lot easier. You have a lot less work to do if you just let your dependency management system handle your dependencies. This runs. If this works the way I might hope it would be, and actually I'm just going to, because we already just built things I love about cake and dependency management is so I know I just did this so I don't need to do it again I can just skip the skip a step and just do the pack and if all goes well then into bin release there will be a new NuGet package oh look at that just as I spoke there it is it showed up that's perfect now, another way you could do this, it's worth keeping this in mind, it uh, depends on what you prefer, uh, that you can go into the settings and you can go to package and you can say generate a NuGet package on build. And that's fine. I, it would be kind of nice if, like if it only did it on release builds or only did it when I wanted to or allowed me to configure it all. I just 
I like control. I like having a lot of control, and I like having all that control in a script. It makes life a lot easier for me. I found so I, but I don't do this, but you can. There's there's no reason. No reason you couldn't. Okay, so we've got a new PKG, and now the trick is we need to get this pushed up into here. And so they give you these steps. They say, oh, hey, don't forget, you need to add a source, and then you can just push it and make it super easy. I thought, oh, that sounds that sounds good. It sounds easy. And if we do that in Cake rather than in the command line, then just do something like task. And now we're going to new get push and the file path will be that and life's easier when you use Linux slash forward slashes instead of backslashes. And most most systems I've worked with I know that they just kind of they, they just kind of figured out and it, and it works and it's really nice. So and then well let's just be a little lazy about this for now. And inside of the release folder the new PKG. Oh, we need to specify the source. Yes. So if we're going to follow the command line, we need to say source equals, and we'll call it Wichita Password Validator because that's what they told us to call it. And we can have an API key, API key of whatever they told us to. All right. Does that look good? What do you think? Will this work? We've already done the pack, so I can temporarily disable that. Run the push. Uh, now, the astute among you may be saying, oh, Lee, I think you have missed a step. I think you needed to add the source, and you would be right. But I thought it would be just uh, interesting to see what the error is that you get when you forget to do it. The specified source, which code password validator is invalid. Please provide a valid source. Okay, well, to do that, what we really need to do is add a source. So we'll make a new task called add source, and this will look something like new get add source. Man, they make it so easy, right? So we're going to do this, where the name is the widget code password validator and the source is that thing you might be thinking that this will just work but it's not going to and the reason is that there's no credentials to be able to get to this so let's just run it and see oh it worked <laughs> okay all right, let's just see what happens then. So uh, source was added, and oh, let's not do it twice. Say if new get exists or something has source. If we have this source, or we should say if not we have the source, then add it. Something like that. We'll just put in a little bit of logging because that will make things a little easier so we know what's actually happening. And so if I run the push now, I guess this is probably when the validation error occurs. The source already exists. Oh, it's the URL. It wants the URL. Aha. Okay. Right? Source. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so let's try that again and see where this fails. Uh, 401 unauthorized. Okay, there we go. Finally got the error that I was expecting to see. And the problem here is that when we added this source, we wanted to specify the credentials, so this would be a new new get 
Sources settings. There we go. Okay, username equals, and what do we put here? If if you're like me, you're probably thinking, oh, well, I guess I should put my Microsoft credentials in here, but that is definitely not what you want to do. What you actually want to do is to create a new, uh, go to the security setting and create a new personal access token. And so I'm going to create a new token called <laughs> delete me because I'm actually going to make a very poor decision here and live share what my actual password is. I'll have it expire tomorrow, but I will actually delete it. I swear. So I could give it full access. That would be a terrible idea. Or I could go and give it just what is required, which in this case is it's like source. No, it's called feed. Feeds and packages. We need to be able to read and write feeds and packages. And so let's try with delete me. And there's the password. Okay, that's nice and secure. Uh, this is not going to quite work, I guess, because we want to say if. Because now we've, the problem is we've already added this and we've added it without the credentials. Well, we need to add it with those credentials. And to get that to work, we probably should delete the source. So here we're going to new get remove source. Oh, it wants the name and the source this time. It's funny how sometimes it wants one piece of information and sometimes it wants another. And it's not like this is a cake's fault. It's just mirroring whatever the APIs are. So I think that if we do this now, this should actually should actually work. It should push up. All right. I run the task. This could be very, very exciting. If this works, we'll be able to go over to the feeds and see that that new source exists. Okay, I think uh, this should be dot slash, and really this release should be anyway, right? And we've already done the add source, so let's just skip that. Oh, look at this, pushing, pushing, yep, there it is. It got pushed up to the source, and this looks good, and now... If I refresh the feed, hey, there it is. We've got a widget code off lib. So now the only thing we need to do is to consume it. So this other department, this other mythical department in the reporting, the reporting team was very sadly not able to do anything with the with their password validator. But now they ought to be able to go in to dependencies, manage NuGet packages. And they ought to be able to say, I want a widget code off lib, right? Hmm, no packages found. Hmm, no packages found. Well, the problem is we are looking in nuget.org, but we need to add our new source. And so to do that, you click add, and then we need to get the information out of here. Connect to feed. There we go, that's the URL right there under package source URL. And so there's the URL, and what do we call this thing? New widget code password validator. Hey, there it is, excellent. I'm gonna install widget code off lib. And fantastic, we can import the reference. And now we can knock out our to-do to publish to private NuGet feed and subscribe. I'm going to control F5. And hopefully, oh, this is, 
running reporting. I just right clicked and hit A because that's set as startup project. I love that keyboard shortcut. Welcome to reporting. Yes. Oh wait, that doesn't look right. Here are some pretty pictures. Well, it it worked. If password if password is valid. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. This sets things up perfectly for the next video. So, new password validator is password valid. <laughs> it's decompiling. Uh, it's saying the password is valid if it's less than six. But what we really wanted is if the password is valid if it's greater than or equal to six. So, what we want to do at this point is to run this again. But the problem is we've hard coded 1.0.0 in the version number. And so as soon as I run this task again, there are going to be errors. And so that's what I'm going to do in the next episode. In the next episode, I'm going to go over how to do versioning, but I want to take it a step further by then having all of the continuous integration part of this working on the dev server, which is the reason we wrote this in Cake to begin with. And so right now we're going to, so we're going to immediately, we're going to fix this error. We've already got a 1.0.0 and then we're going to get this whole thing running inside of an Azure DevOps pipeline, the way things should be. And you're going to be amazed at how easy it is to do. So hope you have enjoyed this shorter than usual code hour and have you, uh, have a, have a wonderful, wonderful week or a wonderful day or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. And, and um, now I just need to find the, the off button.